As promised the last time, we present a whirlwind tour of the mathematical preliminaries. The good news is that we cover almost all of these topics in the two semesters of discrete math that's taught here at UH Hilo. With that in mind, let's get started. A lot of times in mathematics, we want to prove a proposition P of N about all the natural numbers. One technique for doing this is mathematical induction. In mathematical induction, we show that some base case, usually P of 1, is true. We then assume that P1 through PK are true, and then show that the statement holds for P of K plus 1. If both of these statements are true, then we show the statement is true for all the natural numbers. Knuth's discussion on numbers includes the integers, rational, and real numbers. He also discusses complex numbers. I hope that you're fairly familiar with the integers by now. A rational number is one that can be expressed as a quotient or fraction p over q of two integers, a numerator p and a non-zero denominator q. Irrational numbers are those that cannot be expressed as rational numbers, such as the square root of 2, e, pi, and phi, to name a few of the more famous ones. Defining real and complex numbers is a bit trickier, so we'll use Wolfram for these definitions. The field of all rational and irrational numbers is called the real numbers, or simply the reals. Complex numbers have a real component and imaginary component. In particular, the complex numbers are a field C of numbers of the form x plus iy, where x and y are real numbers, and i is the imaginary unit equal to the square root of minus 1. Wolfram defines the power as an exponent to which a given quantity is raised. The exponent x raised to the a is therefore known as x raised to the eighth power. The logarithm log base b of x for base b and number x is defined to be the inverse function of taking b to the power of x. We talk about sums and products quite a bit in discrete math and in calculus. You should be familiar with some of the more commonly used ones, such as sigma i equal 1 to n of i, and that one is equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2. Knuth also discusses the floor and ceiling functions as part of his discussion on basic mathematics. The modulus function is also covered, and you should be familiar with these functions from CS150 at the very least. As part of the discussion on elementary number theory, he defines a prime number. Primes are often a critical component of cryptography applications. In layperson's term, a factorial is a product of an integer and all the integers below it. For example, the factorial of 4 is equal to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 24. And we usually denote this with an exclamation mark. A permutation of n objects is an arrangement of n distinct objects in a row. Number of permutations for n objects is equal to n factorial. The ternial function is a slightly related concept to the factorial function. It can be used for non-integer values. We use the question mark and find n question mark as 1 half times n times n plus 1. So 1 half question mark is equal to 1 half times 1 half plus uh, 3 halves, which is equal to 3 eighths. Euler and Sterling worked on defining the factorial more formally for non-integer values. The binomial coefficient n choose k is the number of ways of picking k unordered outcomes from n possibilities. These are also known as combinations or combinatorial numbers. We can calculate these as n factorial divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial. A fun way to calculate these is using Pascal's triangle, which you see depicted here on the right. In mathematics, the n harmonic number is the sum of the reciprocals of the first n natural numbers. According to Knuth, the sum does not occur very often in classical mathematics, but it comes up frequently in the analysis of algorithms. Fibonacci numbers are everyone's favorite, and I'm sure you can define them by now. If not, f of 0 is 0, f of 1 is 1, and f of n is equal to f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2, for n is greater than 2. These numbers were actually discovered 1400 years prior to Fibonacci by Pingala in India, who was working on enumerating possible patterns of Sanskrit poetry from the syllables of two lengths. A generating function f of x is a formal power series whose coefficients gives the sequence a0, a1, all the way to an. Generating functions are useful in combinatorical enumeration problems. For example, the subset sum problem, which asks the number of ways to select m out of n, uh, capital M given integer such that their sum equals s can be solved using generating functions. Last but not least, we have big O notation. This should be familiar to you from CS 141, 150, 151, 241, to name a few places. It's used symbolically to express the asymptotic behavior of a given function. This notation was introduced in 1894 by Paul Bachman. In computer science, we often abuse it somewhat uh, to give the precise order of magnitude by which the work associated with an algorithm increases.
There is a whole lot more to unpack in 100 pages of Knuth's text than I've given here. I recommend the giving section 1.2 of his text to read after you've completed the discrete math sequence. It's also a handy guide to the essential math for computer science if you need a less weighty and cooler reference for your desk than the discrete math textbook. Thanks so much for watching. Next week we'll take a look at